Chapter 22. You want me to what? Lester's voice was flat, his face set in a distinctly, are you kidding me, kind of expression. We were stopped for gas somewhere in Kentucky later that same afternoon. Rodeo had gone inside to use the bathroom and Lester was out pumping the fuel. And I knew it was my chance, so I took it. I want you to drive all night. Oh, and don't tell my dad that I asked you to. That's it. That's it, huh? Lester cocked an eyebrow. I'm going to need a little more information, if you don't mind. I eyed the convenience store door, checking for Rodeo. I'd noticed that Rodeo grabbed his book before he went in, so I figured I had a few minutes. Um, uh, well, I'm just going to kind of in a hurry, an important hurry, so I want to cover as many miles as fast as we can. Uh-huh, Lester said. He crossed his arms and leaned against the bus. Lay it on me, kid. This isn't about some pork chop sandwich, is it? I sucked on my teeth for a second, squinted one eye against the afternoon glare and looked at Lester. He was good people, no doubt about it, and I needed his help, no doubt about that, either. But if I took a risk and told him everything and then he blabbed it to rodeo, I'd be sunk. I blew a strand of hair out of my face. You promise not to tell rodeo, I asked. And without a pause, Lester shook his head and said, Nope. But when he saw my look of dismal betrayal, he lightened up a bit. Okay, okay, he said. Is whatever's going on illegal? No, sir. Is it dangerous? You going to get hurt? No, sir. It was Lester's turn to suck on his teeth. He considered me for a few seconds, an eyebrow arched. Tick tock, tick tock, Lester, I said. Okay. If I decide it's not illegal, and if I decide it's not dangerous, and if I decide I'm not worried about you, I promise not to tell your daddy. That's the best I can do. I clicked my tongue. That was about three more ifs than I was comfortable with, but I didn't have a ton of options. I took a lung filling breath and spat it out all at once, starting with, you know how I told you about my mom and sisters? and end in 30 seconds later near the bottom of my lungs with, and so I got to get back there by Wednesday morning, otherwise it's going to forever, and I just couldn't live with that at the end. During my spiel, Lester's face had gone from amused, what is this weirdo girl up to expression, to something more serious. When I was done, he just looked at me a second. Then he nodded a small sort of nod, more to himself than to me. And you really can't tell your daddy all that? Not yet, I said with a shake of my head. We haven't been back in five years, and if he had his way, we'd never go back. It's just too sad for him. And I get that, but losing that box is too sad for me, so i got to get as close as I can before he finds out. And then? I shrugged. I'll blow up that bridge when I come to it, I guess. Lester stepped in closer so I could see the little brown flecks in his green eyes. Coyote? I will not lie to your daddy. If he asks me, I'm telling him the truth. I waited breathless for what he was going to say next. But other than that, I'll do everything I can to get you home in time. I couldn't help it. I threw my arms around old Lester in a big hug. Thank you, thank you, thank you, I said. And he kind of laughed and patted my back awkwardly and said, All right, all right. And then the gas pump clunked off and I let him go and he screwed the gas cap back on Jaeger. I better go take a nap, he said. I got a long night ahead of me. I grinned at him. Darn right you do. I felt a million pounds lighter, with Lester and Salvador helping me carry that secret around instead of having to do it all by myself. Sometimes, trusting someone is about the scariest thing you can do, but you know what? It's a lot less scary than being all alone.